Hello, caregivers, and thank you for joining us with our Tales and Tales Toddler Time for Summer Reading. Featured in these short story times will be infant to toddler read alouds and activities that you can easily duplicate at home to promote a love of literacy with your little one in a fun and engaging manner. Information about incorporating this at home, as well as the related titles I mentioned in each video can be found below. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and like, um, and then you'll be notified of any upcoming videos that we have on our channel. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our toddler tale for today. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to another story time. Thank you for joining us at Farmer Brown's Puppet Farm today. As you can see, we already have some of our farm animals out. Do you remember who this is? It's been a while since we've seen them. This is the baby sheep. Do you remember what the baby sheep is called? That's right, it's a lamb. And next to lamb, we have dog. That's right. And if you notice, dog is sitting still. He's tired. They just got back from an incredible journey. They went somewhere cold. So cold that pig couldn't go because it was too cold for pig. Can you think of somewhere that's really cold? That's right, they came back from the North Pole and the South Pole. First they went north and then they went south and they brought back some special visitors for today's story time. Are you ready to meet them? Awesome, us too. Coming in first is someone who is flying. Can you think of a flying animal that lives somewhere really cold? Hmm, well like our friends here, this animal is white. It comes out at night and it goes hoo, hoo. What animal does that? Oh, here it comes. Oh, can you say hello to the snowy owl? Saying hello to you. Now, a snowy owl says hoo, hoo, but we're going to flap our wings for our song. Are you ready? The owl on the farm flaps its wings, flaps its wings, flaps its wings. The owl on the farm flaps its wings all morning long. And this owl is sleepy because owls, do they come out at daytime or nighttime? They come out at nighttime and right now it's daytime. So this owl is going to go get ready and rest for story time before it takes a nap. And someone else is going to come visit us. This animal came back from the South Pole. It can only be found on the South Pole. It looks like it's wearing a little suit. And it waddles. Go ahead and practice some waddling because that's what we're going to do for our song. What animal is that? Hmm. It is our... <gasps> Baby penguin! Can you say hello to the baby penguin? Let's see here. Penguin's gonna say hello to you by waving a flipper. <gasps> Ready? The penguin on the farm goes waddle, 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 waddle. The penguin on the farm goes waddle, waddle, waddle all day long. He's gonna waddle over and get ready for story time. And our last friend that is coming to visit us from the North Pole today is, hmm, how to describe this animal? It's big. Actually, it is the biggest of its kind of animal. It's the biggest one. It has fur. It has big paws with some claws and sharp teeth. And just like its other friend, it is all white. Here he comes. This animal is making his way. He just woke up. He had a long journey. It's our polar bear. That's right. Say hello to polar bear. He came a long way to get here. Now, what does a polar bear do? 
That's right, bears, all bears go roar. Can you give me a great big roar? Good job. So let's get ready for those roars. The polar bear on the farm goes roar, 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 roar. The polar bear on the farm goes roar, roar, roar all night long. Oh. Dog says, it's not time for roaring. It's time for a story. Are you ready for a story? All right, polar bear's gonna go sit down and we are gonna sing our story song. Are you ready? Here we go. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Good job, that woke Owl up because we gotta be awake for a story, right? Okay, now it's time for the quiet parts. If you're ready for a story, zip your lips, zoop, zoop. If you're ready for a story, zip your lips, zoop, zoop. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, zip your lips, zoop, zoop. All right, next up, we got our lips. No more talking. What's next? Our listening ears. Get those listening ears ready. If you're ready for a story, put on your listening ears. If you're ready for a story, put on your listening ears. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, put on your listening ears. Now last one. This one's most important. And today dog's doing a good job doing it. If you're ready for a story, sit so still. If you're ready for a story, sit so still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit so still. Awesome. I am, I think I'm going to carry dog today over to our chair. He's just so tired after that journey. And Lamb's going to follow us too. How about you come as well? All right, boys and girls, everyone has settled down and they are ready for a story and mostly a nap. But do we nap during story time? No, so they're going to do their best to stay awake. Even Owl up here, who is ready to tuck right in. Before we get started, I'm going to show you some really good stories that have to do with our polar animals, because they might not even make it to their bedtime story today. They are so sleepy. So let's see what we got. If you see any story here that you want to check out and read, look at the information below the video. That way you can find out how you can check it out and read it at home yourself. Our first one is an easy reader and it is a learning story about all the different polar animals. And as you can see, some of our friends that are at story time today are in this story so you can learn about them. For beginning readers, you could check it out and read it yourself or with your grown up. Or if you are not yet reading, your grown-up can read it to you. That way you can learn to read it on your own. And then we have another learning book. This one's really fun. We have a penguin story, which makes penguins super happy to see. This is a counting story, counting backwards. So if you've already mastered counting forward, you should try counting backwards. And this story might be perfect for you. And then, hmm, actually we're going to save this one because we're going to read it. It's a super fast story. This story right here is called Wiggles. It's like wiggle, 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 wiggles and squiggles. So what's so neat about it is you can actually feel the shapes inside of the books that it's making. So if you have a little brother or sister who's getting ready to learn and trace things, they learn really fast by tracing the lines in things. They learn by touch, super awesome. All right, and then if you like a movie and you like Baby Einstein's, this is another one called Discovering Shapes. So that's what we're actually gonna read in just a little bit is all about shapes because our activity today has to deal with shapes. So we are gonna learn about and then we also have snowy owls, just like our friend up here. So I learned they like to sleep at night by reading. I mean, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. They like to sleep during the day. And I learned that from this story. There's also some other interesting facts in here that you can learn about if you check it out and read. 
And these next two stories, um, one of them we're going to read together and it will be familiar to you, but the other one is a fun picture book that your grown-up can check out and read with you, and it is called Penguin Problems by Jory Johnson. Oh, Jory John, I'm sorry. Jory John writes a lot of very interesting stories and they're really funny and good. He's a highly recommended author for your grown-ups to read stories with you and you guys will enjoy them too. But this one I picked to share because of our friend Penguin. So if you want a funny story, that one's perfect for you. All right. Now, as promised, before our guys here fall asleep and before you guys fall asleep too, I hope you don't. Can you stay awake for me? Thank you. We are going to check out the shape book because, like I said, our activity today has to do with shapes. Are you ready? Awesome. Let's get started. All right, boys and girls, this book right here is called My First Book of Shapes. Now, you might say, that book's too little for me. Well, boys and girls, it is a very interesting book. It's like a look and see book. And right here has Spanish. So if you're learning Spanish, this might be a great book to start with. Now, Miss Tiffany, I don't speak a lot of Spanish, hardly any at all. But I even look at these books to learn some Spanish words. So I will say the Spanish words for the shapes, but there's more Spanish inside too for the English that's in there. And if you're interested in Spanish story times, you could check out Miss Elena's Spanish story times that she does on Thursdays on our Facebook page. You can learn lots of Spanish. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with our story. This is a circle. And right here is the Spanish word for circle. It says circulo. Down here is the look and find part. It says, point to a circle you can eat. Do you see a circle you can eat? Oh my goodness, there are so many on here. Can you eat that? No, those are buttons. But can you eat that? Oh, that's a tomato. I love tomatoes. Do you love tomatoes? Mm, I know some people don't. <laughs> All right, what about... <gasps> Ooh, that looks like candy. Can you eat candy? Yes, so this is a fun book. Okay, and then it says, where is the circle with a happy face? Do you see it? Hmm, is that it up there? No, that's a bumblebee. There it is. All right, and then right here it says, this little circle fits inside a... So let's see what this circle fits inside of. A star. Do you see all those lovely stars? I wonder what we're going to be looking for. Oh, the Spanish word for star right here is estrella. It says, can you find a purple star? Do you see that purple star? Where is it? Good job. All right, and then it says, which star lives in the sea? Do you see a sea star? Hmm. Oh, that's right, Miss Tiffany's not gonna help you this time, but I see it. I hope you found it too. Let's see what we go to next. It's a Square, that's right. You see all these squares that you can find all around you? It says right here, let me look at it the right way. Ooh, this one's hard for Miss Tiffany. It says quadrado. Quadrado? No, I can't say it. We'll have to ask Miss Elena on that one so that way I can practice. See, sometimes we might not know something. We'll have to ask someone else to help us. Down here it says, which square holds a present? Hmm, do you see a square that holds a present? Hmm. Ooh, it has a nice bow on it if you haven't found it. All right, and then it says, can you find a pink square? 
Do you see a pink square anywhere? Oh, I see some squares that have pink on them. You can count those too. All right, and it says, this little square fits inside a, hmm, I wonder what this square fits inside of. <gasps> a rectangle, so you can see our square right here inside of the rectangle. And the Spanish word is rectangulo. Which rectangle is for painting? Do you see something that's for painting? Hmm. Hmm. I see it. You're going to have to use one of those for our activity today. So it's a color activity. It is a painting activity. And it's a shape activity. I hope you're excited. Then we have a triangle. This is triangulo. Which triangle goes on your head? Where's it at? Good job. And look, there's our bumblebee friend again. I wonder if he's on every page. I didn't notice that. I wonder if he is. Can you see a triangle made of cheese? Hmm. Where is that triangle made of cheese? Good job. Then this little triangle fits inside a, hmm, I wonder what shape is left. A heart. And the Spanish word is corazón. I hope I said that right. We'll have to check with Miss Elena. Says, which heart grows on a tree? Hmm. You see something that grows on a tree that's shaped like a heart? Ooh, I see it. And then, can you find a heart-shaped button? I found it. All right, so we went over our shapes. We tried some Spanish words. Remember, we're gonna check with Miss Elena to see if we said those correctly. And we also had some fun looking for other things shaped like it. Look around your room, see what shapes you can find. But it's not the activity for today. Today's activity is, like I promised, a painting activity. What are you doing, Polar Bear? Writing secret messages? Oh, boys and girls, I wonder what Polar Bear has written. Hmm, I can't really tell what it says. It looks like it's very white. Hmm, maybe if we use some watercolors, we can find out Polar Bear's secret message. Let's see here. How about we use blue? Since blue stands out really good against white. And it's also one of Polar Bear's favorite colors. Let's see here. Oh, let me put this wax crayon away. Hmm. Oh, I'm starting to see a letter. Terry, if you want to speed this up. Oh, look, boys and girls, it's our first letter. What letter is that? It could be an I or it could be a 
age. Hmm, let's keep going and find out. Hmm, I don't know if that's a letter. We've been talking about shapes, so maybe that is a shape. Let's get in the middle to see if there's anything in the middle. <gasps> Whoa, what shape is that, boys and girls? You're right, it's a heart. So it says, I heart, which can mean love. Mm, I wonder what polar bear loves. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh, I see some stuff popping up. Look at that. We have a lot of letters. We have a B. What is that? An O. And another O. Then we have a K. And an S. What does that spell? Books. So Polar Bear wrote us a secret message that says, I love books. Isn't that awesome, boys and girls? Well, if you want to write secret messages, all you need is a wax crayon or a white crayon. If you're writing on, writing on white paper. And then some watercolors. That way, you and your friends can write secret messages to each other and practice your shapes and your letters. And also colors, because we use blue, but look at all those other awesome colors that could be used as well. All right, boys and girls, let's head back. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that painting activity. You can try it again and amaze your friends at home. Remember, all you need is just some white construction paper, some watercolor paint, and either a white crayon or a wax crayon. And you can make those secret shapes and color them in yourself. But let's get started with our last story for today. That way we can send these guys home and they can take their nap. Are you ready? This is, if it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. Does that sound familiar? It should, we sing that song all the time at our story time when we're waiting on our animals. But this story is by Kim Corman and illustrated by Lisa Woodworth. And they have set to the song some interesting words, what to do when it's snowy. And we can hope for snow here in Georgia. Hopefully we'll get some this winter. We can prepare by, if it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. You can tumble on the tundra just because. If it's snowy and you know it, roll a snowball up and throw it. If it's snowy and you know it, clap your paws. If your fur is full of flurries, taste a flake. 
Skate around or make some angels on the lake. If your fur is full of flurries, you'll forget your winter worries. If your fur is full of flurries, taste a flake. Go ah. If the skies are crisp and clearing, grab your skis. Give your tiny friends a ride behind your knees. If the skies are crisp and clearing, let the walrus do the steering. If the skies are crisp and clearing, grab your skis. Grab those skis. If it's shimmery and sunny, sculpt a friend. If he topples, it's an easy job to mend. If it's shimmery and sunny, borrow glasses from the bunny. If it's shimmery and it's sunny, sculpt a friend. They're making snowmen. Or in this case, it might be a snow squirrel. If it's frosty and you're freezing, build a fort. Leaving room for all your buddies, tall or short. If it's frosty and you're freezing, add some curtains that are pleasing. If it's frosty and you're freezing, build a fort. And you build a fort out of snow and ice. It's called an igloo. If it's drafty and you're drifting, give a roar. Give a roar. Get some help from the white belugas off the shore. If it's drafty and you're drifting, hail a whale for heavy lifting. If it's drafty and you're drifting, give a roar. Excellent roars, boys and girls. If at last you're finally landing, blow a kiss. Make a promise that you'll write to friends you'll miss. If at last you're finally landing, leave the float you've been commanding. If at last you're finally landing, blow a kiss. Let's blow a kiss to all of our friends here that came to story time today. They're going to go home up to the North Pole. Who lives at the North Pole? Do you remember? Mm, let's write the polar bear. Blow a polar bear a kiss. Go. All right. Then, who lives at the South Pole? Do you remember? Mm, that's right. Penguin lives at the South Pole. I'm going to wave to Penguin. Bye, Penguin. And... Our feathery friend here just lives where it's really cold in the tundra areas. So let's say goodbye, owl. You can flap your wings and it's a goodbye. All right, bye, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed story time today, and we will see you again next time.